All right, class, let's go with it here. Uh, this is the homework that came up uh, yesterday during class. Dun, 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 dun. This is 49 and 55. So I'm going to jump to it here. This is 49. And so I copied and pasted onto the screen here. So it says, can you give me the distance between the two lines? Ah, interesting fact. Here it is. Notice that um, we have a formula in 10.1, but it's about a point in the line. So it says, hey, what is the distance from a point to a line? Now notice real quick here on the diagram. Let me just come back to it here. Uh, whenever there's a between a point and a line, I'm going to go like this. Here's my line like this. And there's a point. Notice on the um, on the illustration in the textbook here, it is always a distance straight as like as fast as you can to the line. So that will be kind of like the distance right there. Sorry, we'll go here. That's the distance there. So notice it's like the fastest way you can get back to the line. So if you're looking at between two, two lines, two parallel lines, you know it's going to be like this. It's going to be the distance from here to here. It'll also be the distance from here to here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have to take one point somewhere along a line, pick a line, and then get take a point right there. So I'm going to I'm going to choose that point right there, and that point's going to be uh, one comma zero. That's what I choose the point to be because the distance from one line to the other line is always going to be the same. Notice all the red lines, the red distances I have. Okay, so real quick here, now the question is which line is which. So Hopefully you know that this guy right here is on is on top. The reason why you know it, if you were just plug in a point, let's say uh, zero comma five, it's a solution to this line. Zero comma five would be x zero y is five makes x plus y equals five, and just choose any point that you like. Along if you chose five zero, it would have still said, hey, this is the line. All right, if you chose one zero, one zero only works for this line here. So that means this has to be, so this equation x plus y equals one is the bottom equation. And x plus y is five is that top graph. So I'm gonna pick a point along one of the parallel lines. Doesn't matter which one, I'm gonna pick it. This is gonna be my x one, y one right here. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make that into a point. This one I'm gonna make into a line, but I need to set it equal to zero. So I'm gonna subtract five from both sides to give me this. The reason why I need to do that is because the numbers, the coefficients in front of x is gonna be my a value. The coefficient in front of y is gonna be my b value, and the constant is gonna be my c value. Then real quick here, what's my formula? Let's get going with the formula. The formula is the absolute value of a times x1 plus b times y1 and plus c. That's the formula there all over the square root of a being squared plus b being squared. That's your two uh, items here and that's the ratio between the two. So let's plug all this in. Uh, let's label all this first here. So first things first is uh, a is equal to 1 because it's the number that's multiplying x. b is equal to 1. It's the number multiplying y and c is negative 5 and x1 is technically 1 and y1 0. There it is. I've labeled all those points there. Now let's just plug them in. So but the trick here was was really just to pick a point along one of those lines to be a point and then you're going to get your distance. All right a value 1 x1 1, 1 plus b value is 1 y1 is 0 plus c value is negative 5, absolute value. Then the square root of a value is 1 being squared plus b value is 1 being squared. Let's simplify this and we are done. So let's see, 1 times 1 is 1 on top. That's going to be 0. And that's going to be plus negative 5, or you can say subtract 5, I guess. That's what that is. And 1 squared is 1 plus 1 more is 2. We have a square root on our hands here, and it looks like 1 plus 0 minus 5 is a negative 4. And the absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4. 
Okay, can't reduce those, but uh, we don't like to have square roots. Let me bring it over here. We don't like to have square roots on the bottom. So do you guys know the little trick here? We multiply by top and bottom by the square root of root two or whatever is gonna make this into a perfect square. So square root of two times square root of two is, is technically a square root of four, which makes just a regular two. The top four is an outside number, square root of two is an inside number, so they're just like that, but then the four and the two reduce. So that becomes a one, that becomes a two. <clears throat> And I have two root two. Let me check. Let me check if that is correct. Two root two is correct. There it is. So there's my distance. If you were to choose any other point, it doesn't matter. If you were to choose uh, this point here, zero one, or another point here or here, you would have still got the same thing as two root two. All right, on to number 55. 55 is a truss. All right, so if you ever went up to an attic in your home, uh, you should see something like this. This is a truss. It's a standard roof truss. So uh, attic is right inside here. This is usually the point of a roof, of a sloped roof down. And the reason why we make these is because of this little piece right here. So notice it comes in right at a 90 degree angle each time. So it gives you a whole bunch of support structure right there, a whole bunch of support. And then you have a, a double support system right here to hold it all together. So therefore your roof becomes um, almost like a most solid you can make it with two by fours um, with the least amount of weight. That's kind of what you're looking at. Okay, but our job is to figure out what in the world is angle alpha and angle beta. That's what our value is all about. Okay, so let's think about this here for a little bit. Um, if I were to, let's so first of all, first of all, let's see, if I'm going to go from here to here, so all this whole portion here, that's going to be 12 feet, true? I actually write it on here. And so the whole thing going all the way down would be 12 feet. And then if I cut this in half like this, because I'm only going to concentrate on the right portion here, if I cut this in half, this will be 18 for me. Okay, I think that's what I want here. Okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to have to convert it to lines because what we do is we have this little uh, formula that says I can convert lines into measurements. So if I were to do this, if I go 12 high like this, I'm going to make this guy to be my like a zero zero marker right here. If that's zero zero and I go 12 high, that means my my point here is actually at, um, let's see, 0, 12. And then if I go out from the 0, 0 marker all the way out to here, that means my second point is at 18, 0. There it is. I went to the right 18 feet, and then I went up 12 feet. So that slope of that line really comes down like this. There's my line. Cool, cool. OK. And now I have this little formula that says if I am trying to find my angle, I can find this angle right here. I can find that angle there. By taking uh, theta is equal to 180 minus tangent of, oops, of, sorry here, real quick here, let me see. Make sure I get the formula correctly here. Yeah, theta, huh? Of my oh, tangent inverse, there you go, of my slope. That's what I want. No oh, plus, there you go. Okay, finally got everything. So it's 180 plus tangent inverse of m. So that little slope right there will give me tangent inverse of m. And which, in a sense, if we take it from 180, will give us this right here. So let's plug it in. I guess we need to figure out is what is my slope? And my slope coming down is uh, from geometry. We know that all we need to do is figure out the rise divided by the run. So in fact, in this case, it's going to go down 12 units and it comes across 18 units. So this is that reduced by six looks like. I can get myself a negative two thirds here. 
perfect. Okay, let's plug in that into there. So we're going to plug in 180 minus tangent inverse of a negative two thirds. Okay, that we need to get a calculator for. So let's jam with uh, taskbar open, calculator given, enter, and I got myself 180 minus tangent. Oh, hold on. You know what? Let's go to mode. Make sure I'm in degree mode because it's not going to work if I'm in radians. Degrees, yes. Okay. 180 uh, tangent inverse of negative 2 divided by 3. Enter. Whoa. Plus sign. There we go. I keep on doing the plus sign. Mistake here. It's plus. Can't be over 180. Let's go back to this here. Sorry about that. Boom. This would be 180. Plus, there it is, tangent inverse. Negative 2 divided by 3. Okay, way better now. Okay, 146.3. Looks like 3, 1. 30, 3, 1 degrees here. So I got this little guy as 146.31 degrees. Okay, but I'm not looking for that angle. I'm looking for the angle here. Or, uh, let me change my pen color just so we have it. I'm looking for this angle right here first before I get anything else here. Okay, so I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract that from 180. That's all. So in this case, I'm going to take um, 180 minus 146.31. Uh, let's see, borrowing, that's going to give me 7, 9, decimal place here. So that's going to be 9 and 10. So that's going to be 9, 6.33. Okay, I got it. So the angle measurement here is 33.69 degrees. That's cool. But I know some stuff of triangles. I know that if you add all the interior angles of a triangle, it's 180 degrees, but this is 90 right here. So that means since that's 90, all I got to do is figure out what's 90 minus a 33.69. Okay, so I got myself some borrowing to do again. So 10 minus 9 is 1. Uh, 9 minus that's 3. And let's see, that's going to be 6, and that's 5. So that's cool. So my beta, this little guy right here, my beta angle is... 56.31 degrees, found it. Okay, so now I'm going to do this here. I'm going to start erasing a few things here just so we can get a, there's like too much stuff here. So that's for that. Let me, let me start erasing things just so we can have a little clearer spot to work with here. Okay, I think I can erase all that right there. Okay. So I just found out that this guy, I found out two things actually. I found this angle is a 33.69 degrees. I found angle beta is 56.31 degrees. That's cool. Okay, now the question is how do you get alpha? Okay, this one goes back to geometry. If you think back to geometry days, um, the question is, is this triangle and this triangle the same? Are these two triangles the same uh, size and shape? If you think back to your days, aren't they sharing a side here? They're sharing a side. So that actually means that this side and this side are exactly the same. And notice that these two are both going to have a 90 degree angle. So they both share uh, an exact same angle measurement. And now the question is, do they share any other side? And they do. Notice that this is six feet across here, and it's coming down the same angle. So in order to get a, a height value of the same angle, in fact, we know what it is. It's right over here, right? It's two thirds. So we've come down six feet here, and then we come down another six feet here. That means these two sides are exactly the same. So from geometry, I just proved that these two triangles are exactly the same by something called the side angle side postulate. Do you guys remember that from geometry? So if these guys are the same, that means uh, angle beta or another angle beta is over here. That means this guy is going to be the same if you sort of flip it over. If you were to cut it right here and kind of flip this angle over in itself, this guy would be angle alpha. 
or the same measurement as angle alpha. So there it is, we've got it. Angle alpha is 33.69 degrees. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that made sense. If not, please ask me in class. We can go over it real quick here in class tomorrow. All right, sounds good and hopefully that made sense.